I have to preface this by saying that originally, I got an email a while back from Charles asking for possible topics. Okay, now you've heard about escapes from uh, Kashmir houseboats and the, uh, the, the pervert in the woods and the bomb under the sea and all these things. This story is a little bit different. Okay, because I got the email from Charles, from Charles, and he was like, you know, do you have any ideas? Do you have any stories? Do you have any ideas? I'm like, I've got this story about a pigeon, you know, and I, I want. How about animal stories? Let's have a night of animal stories, you know. Someone can talk about their cat and their amorous affairs with a giraffe, and and I can talk about the pigeon. And he was like, ah. Uh, it's like, is there any, and I'm, and I'm trying to think, what's another slant on the pigeon story? They're like, well, it was kind of an escape. You know, it was certainly an escape for the pigeon. I had, I, there was no escaping involved on my part. But, so this, I just need to say, this is not about me. This is pigeon pride. This is for the pigeon. <laughs> when I, uh, I first came to Japan, Oh my God, over 25 years ago, uh, stayed here for six years, and then uh, and I had, I did I came over on the jet program. I taught at university for a couple of years, and I'd done all this stuff, learned Japanese, and so I had all these these great skills. And then I, I found myself in uh, in Australia, and I thought, oh, well, what what am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? And I thought about teaching, and I, I I wanted a break from that. And I thought about you know business, and then I thought. I I'm not a businessman. I've never been a businessman. I'm not going to go into doing that. So, of course, um, I was trying to find something that I could do that was involving Japanese because I could speak Japanese and I wanted to wanted to keep that up. And so I ended up answering an ad for a job in the duty-free industry, right? Selling stuff to to Japanese tourists who were coming to visit the the wonderful. Uh, city of Sydney. So the, I, I ended up starting off, uh, my first job in, in Duty Free was for a little private concern uh, uh, called Sydney Tower Duty Tax Free. And so it was in Sydney Tower, which is at, it was at the time the, uh, the tallest phallic symbol in the southern hemisphere. And I worked right down there uh, at the base. And, and when I started off working for Sydney Tower Duty Tax Free, they just had one small shop and it was on the corner. And that location was very, very important because being on the corner meant you could have two doorways. And it's all about the doorway in Duty Free because it's, it, you are not allowed to step out of the shop and talk to customers. More doorways, more talking. And so you would get them, people coming by, and you'd say, oh, konnichiwa, I got a tempo, I just, I don't know. And then you'd kind of walk around the inside of the shop and cut, try and catch them at the next doorway. <laughs> well, uh, my boss at the time, Peter Molnar, was this, this beautiful man. And I say beautiful because he always said, beautiful, he was this big Hungarian man, and he would always go and he would look at something and he would say, beautiful, and if the watches weren't arranged, correctly, he would say, this looks like dog's breakfast. It was always dog's breakfast or beautiful. It was very rarely in between with Peter. But Peter decided, we knew that he was opening another shop, and, and it was on the, the one, one floor up, and, uh, and it was this big place, and we, and we didn't, didn't quite know what was going to happen, but the storefront, the front was, was all these glass, when we saw it, there were all these glass windows, and it was about uh, long, I'd say about one and a half times the, the length of this shop front. And it was all glass and we saw it and was like, this is awesome. And Peters was like, you have not seen the awesome part yet. But he probably said, you have not seen the awesome part yet. That's not Hungarian, is it? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, but he goes, he goes, watch. And he, and he starts grabbing the glass panels and pushes them to the side, and he pushes them to the side, and they all disappear, and he goes, this is a doorway. <laughs> and so we had this long doorway, and so my job was to do <laughs> this. 
こんにちは、これから展望台上がりますかあ、そうですか、入場券ありますかまだ買ってないあ、こちらで安くありますよ。どうぞどうぞ入ってください。いや、見るだけでタダですよ。新婚さんですかあ、幸せそう。じゃあ、バイバイ。That was my job. And every once in a while, Peter would send, when it was on a slow day, he would send you out fishing. And fishing meant, you know, go, go out into the mall, go up and down the escalators, and try and find customers for the shop. Anyways, so it was, it was actually not as bad as you might think. It was entertaining, it was interesting, it was always different. And, and I, like, when I was selling stuff, I always tried to say that, I, I'd tell the truth, you know, and if something didn't look good, I'd say, nah, I think you should have this $10,000 watch, not that one. You know, and, I, and, and anyways, it was alright. So, This was the job that I was doing, and there was a lot of standing around, a lot of waiting, but the problem with the second job was that it was on the second floor, and there, were no, there was no sign of light. It was dark. It was, it was inside this place. So when you finally had a, a, a break, uh, I would spend my breaks out in the Pitt Street Pedestrian Mall, which is this wide mall, and it, it had little benches, and trees with little fences around them and you know it was it was as close as you could come to nature um, in the middle of Sydney at that time uh, near near Center Point Tower so one day I was I was sitting there um, out in the Pitt Street pedestrian mall and just kind of relaxing and I noticed the pigeon and there was this pigeon kind of right right smack dab in the middle of the mall and he was going like this and he kind of had Something was wrong with his wing. His wing was kind of dangling a bit. One of his feet wasn't right. And he was just doing this. And he was going around and around and around. And I was watching him go around and around and around. Oh, I'm a bit dizzy. I don't know how he did it. But, you know, it was kind of mesmerizing. I, I, I found myself like, So I'm watching the pigeon going around and around and around, and I kind of look back, got a bit of perspective, and I realized that just like all of you right now, everybody in the Pitt Street Mall was watching the pigeon. And I was like, you know, it's the, I always thought it was the Elvis of pigeons, you know, because he had some charisma about him, you know? It wasn't, all right, it was maybe the 1970s Elvis, you know, this Elvis, but it was still, there was something about him that everybody was watching. And so, I'm watching him, and I found that, that after I, like, first I pulled my, I went the wide angle shot, you know, and then I focused again on just watching him. And I don't know if it's because of, you know, we, we look at so many screens in our lives, but kind of the world, sometimes you lose your sense of peripheral vision, you know, and, and, and you can start to see things as if they're on a screen or on a television. I think that's what was happening because, you know, everybody was watching the pigeon and nobody noticed that barreling down the Pitt Street Mall came a man in a wheelchair. And he was going, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he comes into the, you know, my screen, into the, into the show, and, and he rolls over the pigeon. He looks down, and I don't know if it was like, if he was feeling like this was, I don't know, retribution or what, but he just kind of looked back up and rolled along. And everybody was like, oh. Oh. he rolled over the pigeon, he rolled over the pigeon, what are we going to do? Somebody do something, somebody help the pigeon, help the pigeon, somebody... And we're all, you know, we're just there, retail people on our breaks. And it's like, help the pigeon. No, pigeons, they call them rats with wings. They might have diseases. Don't touch the pigeon. Don't touch the pigeon. Help the pigeon. Don't touch the pigeon. And we're all like, ah, oh, what are we going to do? And then the pigeon goes. <laughs> just like Elvis's last tour, right? <laughs> And he goes like this. 
And you can feel the sigh of relief. All these, you know, part-time people being paid hourly wages to stand in shops. Going, oh, there is justice in the world. The pigeon is okay. The is okay. You know? But we're all a bit concerned, you know? So that was his close call. That was his escape. He's alive. He's doing up there. And we were like, but, you know, what's, we're all really worried still, and we're all watching Elvis the Pigeon. And then, one of the mall um, maintenance staff walks into the picture, and he's wearing gloves. And we're like, oh, yes, someone with gloves. And he reaches down, he very gingerly picks up the pigeon. And we're like, okay. And he starts walking towards the rubbish bin. Exactly! And it's just like, ah, he's gonna throw away the beach. <laughs> you know? And he's walking, and everybody's just, nobody could say anything. You know? Put that pigeon down! No, 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 no. We're just like, ah. And he gets to the rubbish bin and he keeps walking. And everybody's like, Oh, oh, yeah. oh, he didn't throw the pigeon away. Thank God for that. And then, even better, he goes over to one of the trees with a little fence around it. And he takes the pigeon and he puts him inside. And the pigeon starts going like this. He's got the fence in front of him. He's got the tree behind him. His little spot of nature. And we're like, Ah, I get it. This is his world. Like he must, I don't know, maybe he got run over by another wheelchair earlier in his <laughs> life. And he found this place and he's been living happy in his little world and somehow he got out. He wasn't supposed to get out. This guy knows what's happening. Puts it in and it was just like the sense, perfect sense of closure. Like I've never felt that before. Uh, with a pigeon. <laughs> and then, then, like, <laughs> out of both sides of the television screen, one out of the left and one out of the right, two men rush towards the tree. And what, <laughs> what's going on? Two men rush towards the, they're, they're not workers, they're just dressed in plain clothes. One of them is carrying a shoebox, and they rush in. The one with the shoebox opens the shoebox. The other one, not wearing gloves, reaches in, grabs the pigeon. They put him in the box. They put the glid on the box, and they rush on down the Pitt Street Mall, and they run away with the pigeon. And I am like, what the hell is happening? So, this is all I can figure. There was this Twilight Zone episode <laughs> that I watched. <laughs> And it was about the fact that there is no continuity of time. It's simply a series of individual discrete moments. And these individual discrete moments are actually built like little movie sets or theater sets. And if nobody is going to be walking in the back room, right, to, to get the tomato paste for the, the sauce, they don't have to build it because it's not going to be used for that moment, right? So they build each moment. And in the Twilight Zone episode, what happened is this guy, one of, one of the people who was supposed to be building the moment, this, this guy lives in a house, and he's looking around the house, and it's raining outside. It's raining outside. He looks out this window, it's raining. He looks out this window. He looks out this window, and it's not raining. <laughs> Because the guy who was supposed to turn on the rain for that minute wasn't there. He wasn't there. So all I can figure is this, this pigeon was one of those anomalies. He wasn't supposed to be there. He was the absence of rain in a window that we had witnessed. And he had to be removed as quickly as possible. <laughs> by the people who build moments. <laughs> so that's my 
Twilight Zone pigeon story. And, and thank you, Charles, and all the storytellers for building another wonderful moment here tonight. Thank you.